Hi, this is Paul Hart from the saxophonist.org, and I'm here with a playtest and review of the Selmer Lavoie baritone saxophone. <laughs> Lavoie means the voice in French, or the sound. Uh, for me, the term Lavoie is a little bit different. See, I was one of the first to review the Lavoie alto saxophone a number of years ago for Jazz Times. And that instrument was really one of the first forays that Selmer had done with uh, outsourcing some of their work to Taiwanese companies. It was uh, an average instrument and um, it was clunky and unwieldy and not characteristic of the quality that I had come to learn from Selmer. Um, so I was a little bit hesitant to feature um, the name Lavoie again, but then I remembered that some 10 to 15 years had passed and uh, things were different. And I wanted to introduce an intermediate saxophone. We always talk about professional quality saxophones. Uh, but when it comes to the baritone, I thought it might be smart to do an intermediate saxophone or what some call a student saxophone because a lot of people who play baritone out there maybe can't invest 10, 12, 15, $20,000 into a brand new uh, Selmer or a Mark VI or etc. And they need a quality instrument. <clears throat> well, I can say this. A lot has changed in the Lavoie series of saxophones, if it's indicative of anything with this baritone. Um, this is an incredibly well-made baritone saxophone. Plays very easy and um, gets a characteristic Selmer sound, which I really was impressed with. Um, the alto that I played was a good Taiwanese alto for that generation, but really not that great of an instrument uh, in reference to the parent company of Selmer that was going to put its name on it. Um, one of the some, some things that I like, um, first of all, in comparison to the student model instruments of the past that Selmer's used, mainly the Bundy, um, which I think did more to scare saxophone players than anything else. This Lavoie is really wonderful. Ergonomically, it feels pretty good. One of the things I like is it has three different neck strap rings right here. And what is great about that is depending on the torso size of the person playing it again, because a lot of people might be uh, that play this might be students, anywhere from middle school to college students. This is going to help the overall position of the instrument and help the fulcrum point to kind of take the, the weight off. Uh, overall, the hand position is good. The side keys, um, right, sorry, here, do, there is a little bit of a reach to the high uh, high E key, but it is curved, which I like. I think you can see that. So it does create a stop. Um, there's not much of a, a bend in my right hand. Um, the hand is in pretty good position, ergonomically. Um, the low A key, um, the octave mechanism going up is great. The low E going down is a little unwieldy. It's a little out of position. One thing I will say is that I am critical about is the placement of the palm keys. First of all, I have a, a large to extra large size hand. Um, and first thing I noticed that when I was playing this instrument 
is these keys were right up against uh, my palm, which is good for hand position, but not great uh, if you have a smaller hand than mine. Um, the reach between uh, the G sharp, C sharp, etc., was a little bit longer than I'd want. I'd kind of want the B flat to be right here, but overall, not too bad. Again, for my hand, it worked, but for a smaller hand, it might be an issue. The spatula uh, table keys are, are angled, so it's fine. Um, something that I will point out was that the high F and the high D fit my hand pretty well. But if you could look here, the E flat key really kind of hits my hand right here down at the bottom. So I had to make sure that I was kind of reaching a little higher than I think I should. This key should be down a little bit more, uh, or the arm should be a little bit longer. Uh, then that would make the hand position and the movement from D to E flat. See how I keep bumping into that? There were a number of times where I'd be playing and I would hit the D key and then go up to the E flat and get my finger stuck until I got used to it. Overall, the plating is extra. The engraving, it's there. It's nice. It's nothing tremendous. Nothing that you would expect uh, seriously ornate engraving for a student model instrument. <clears throat> but overall, the plating is very well done. The mechanics are good. There are extra bracings on the low C, the low B, and low B flat. Um, there are adjustment screws down there as well. Um, there are U-shaped braces here on the sides, no ball and joint um, movement. Overall, an excellent instrument plays very well in tune, very well in tune, and is very responsive. Now these horns tap out somewhere around $5,000, um, which is a good price for a baritone. I mean, if you're looking for affordability, this would be an easy baritone uh, for me to use professionally if I was a weekend warrior type baritone player like I am. Um, there are some other baritones out there that are right around that range. Uh, the P. Moriot's just slightly higher. I think the Tenor Madness baritone is kind of right in line with this, which might provide a little bit more <clears throat> uh, playability than maybe this instrument. But overall, this is an excellent horn. Really something that if you're looking for um, your first venture into playing the baritone, the Lavoie would certainly be uh, a worthy choice. It comes with a plastic case um, uh, that is form-fitted with wheels and locks, multiple locks, by the way, which is nice. Um, so, you know, you're going to have a good protection for it. All in all, I think a very good instrument for the price and certainly worth checking out. To learn more about this saxophone, other saxophones, mouthpieces, educational articles, and of course, amazing interviews, be sure to check out www.thesaxophonist.org.